will there be another continuing resolution, Mr. Speaker? I are think you we're done be with it. Get these appropriations bills done. We are. We're going to get our our conservative policy writers on these appropriations bills to try to change that spending trajectory. We have to do that. So the the, the strong work is being done, and I think we'll meet those deadlines. And that was the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, with me earlier this month uh, when he joined me in studio uh, saying that there will not be another continuing resolution when Congress faces another shutdown deadline later this week. We've got March 1st and March 8th to get those appropriations bills done. The March 8th deadline, I'm told, is the one that we're focused on, on whether or not we'll see a partial shutdown. President Biden is now inviting the top four congressional leaders to the White House tomorrow to discuss the upcoming shutdown deadline and approving more funding to Ukraine. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer sending a letter to lawmakers claiming that House Republicans need time to sort themselves out, while urging Speaker Johnson to, quote, buck the extremists in his caucus and do the right thing. Joining me right now is Ohio Congressman Warren Davidson, a member of the House Financial Services, Foreign Affairs Committees, and a member of the Task Force to Combat Mexican Drug car Cartels. Congressman, thanks very much for being here this morning. Do you expect a partial shutdown on March 8th? Uh, good morning, Maria. Well, I certainly hope not. I think, uh, unfortunately, the probability is 0.01%. I, I, I doubt that uh, my colleagues will unite to, to really do what I think we should do, which is prioritize funding our own government and, frankly, securing our own border. And the only way we're going to get that is if we send over something that does fund our government at the levels agreed to in the Fiscal Responsibility Act. That passed two-thirds of the House, two-thirds of the Senate. Joe Biden signed it. Uh, while the Four Corners has said, we want a different deal, the body of the House, the body of the Senate hasn't voted on that, and uh, we should stick to what we already agreed to with the Fiscal Responsibility Act, and we should send over some version of H.R. 2. That should go to reconcile. If it can be done, it doesn't look likely with what the Senate's plan has been done. Uh, yeah. The Senate passed a version that isn't good. Uh, they think our version isn't good, but we know we need to secure the board. Uh, so. Uh, it, it sounds like the way that we don't see a partial government shutdown is through another continuing resolution. Is that where we're headed, another CR? Well, you know, the speaker says he's not going to sign another one. Uh, so I, I, hope okay. that, uh, that I hope that we stick to our guns and send over our funding bill and force a negotiation. Okay. Let, let's talk about the upcoming State of the Union, because the White House seems to be uh, thinking this is going to be a reset for the president. The president will be delivering the State of the Union next week, and now some Republican lawmakers are considering a bill that will prohibit the House or Senate leadership from inviting Biden to address Congress until he provides Congress with his national security strategy and budget. Georgia Congressman Buddy Carter points out that the budget was due on February 5th and says that Biden has no business delivering a State of the Union until he provides a budget to Congress. Are you expecting a budget? Well, I don't expect a budget. I mean, Congress hasn't even finished our deadline for the previous fiscal year. I mean, October 1st was the deadline. I'm glad to see Buddy Carter talking about getting our, our ducks in a row for the next fiscal year. But we need to finish our work. I mean, frankly, the idea that we're not in session, that we're out. I mean, it's a, when I was before I was in Congress, I was in manufacturing. And if you were making bad parts, you would at least stop making bad parts. You might have a debate about what went wrong or how to fix it and get back to making good parts. But immediately you'd stop making bad parts. We know we're making bad parts and we're not even in session. The idea that we're talking about funding other governments and securing other borders besides funding our own government, securing ours, to me is crazy. Uh, but I am excited that Buddy Carter's trying to lay the groundwork to do it better next year. Well, I mean, look, it's amazing to me that you all have had no success securing this border. I mean, look, I know that you've tried to use the border as leverage. It, it, it's falling flat. The president is still asking for money for Ukraine and still not doing anything at the border. And we've got horrific stories that we're talking about this morning. Border Patrol arrested more than a dozen illegal migrants with violent criminal histories, including murder, rape, drugs, weapons trafficking. Uh, in uh, East Lita, Texas, a member of the dangerous Mexican cartel Jalisco Nueva Generacion was caught attempting to illegally enter the country. In El Paso, officers arrested eight cartel members from Venezuela, El Salvador, and Mexico. You can see the gang tattoo on one of the mugshots there. We're worried about a Venezuelan gang in New York. And then I'm just reading this story about this uh, Chinese individual 
uh, I don't know how you say his name, Sisin Gao, 67, arrested at an illegal drug trafficking hub in Maine, a town of less than 500 people, this town in mm -hmm. Maine. He was charged with felony trafficking, cop seized 40 pounds of marijuana and, and meth. What are you doing to counter these drug cartels? Yeah, I, I think that um, our colleagues need to realize that asking nicely isn't going to work. We need to stick to our guns and say we are sending over a funding bill, but only one that requires a secure border. And look, uh, the idea that Joe Biden is somehow going to get serious about it, I mean, he, he, he is serious about it. They had two years with Democrat majorities. They did what they wanted to do, which is open the border and flood our country with illegals. And the reality is, if the Senate thinks we need to secure the border and the House thinks we need to secure a border, we should secure the border. We should pass legislation and fix the brokenness that has allowed Joe Biden to circumvent the law and has resulted justly in the impeachment of Alejandro Mayorkas. He needs yeah. to be removed by the Senate. I, I understand, but are you going to hold the line? Are you going to say we're not giving any money to Ukraine until the border is secured? I'm going to say not only are we not giving money to Ukraine, the only money we're giving to America is to secure our border. But it is mind-blowing how the priorities for the administration and, frankly, Schumer seem to be all about funding Ukraine and total nonchalance about funding America. And, and do you believe that the Chinese Communist Party is working with the Mexican cartels to, uh, to move these drugs around and through America? Oh, they absolutely are. They're, they are. they're supplying the, the chemicals for fentanyl, and they're laundering the money. Mm. Congressman, I know this week you are, you are also expected to once again discuss FISA reforms. Uh, people want to understand, uh, you know, the ability of government to, to surveil their conversations. Where does that stand? Look, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, the foreign part of it works fine. Uh, what we're trying to do, or at least some of us are trying to do, is rein in the domestic part. It's being abused. Citizens aren't supposed to be spied on by our government. If you have probable cause, you're supposed to get a warrant or a subpoena. And uh, under FISA authorities, they're, they're not getting warrants. Uh, and even without the warrant, they're, they're circumventing it by buying data that would otherwise require a warrant. We were supposed to have a vote on the version that passed Judiciary Committee in an overwhelmingly bipartisan fashion. Uh, and we were supposed to have a vote on, on uh, Intelligence Committee uh, proposals to, frankly, expand the, the surveillance capability. So those things are irreconcilable. And frankly, the Speaker kind of pulled the bill rather than try to say, let's go to the floor and debate it. All right, Congressman, we'll be watching your work. Thanks very much. Warren Davidson joining us this morning.